But in India, food, clothing and virtually everything else is still mostly bought from street vendors. They, along with construction laborers, domestics, rickshaw drivers and rickshaw pullers, in fact most workers in India's economy are quite literally off the books. Ninety percent uh, of the workforce in India is in the so-called informal sector. I just bought how much? 1,200 rupees. No. Okay, take 900 rupees. Five piece. Uh, 200. Huh? My friend, 200 notes my course. Informal sector. Could be a technical term for a very hard line. How much are the bags? I'm not buying, I'm just interested. How much are they? 500. 500, huh? Oh, that's okay. Okay, thank you. Just looking, okay? Thank you. Oh, I'm, just, I'm just interested, not buying. India has a vast informal economy that provides everything from food to phone repair and even currency exchange. The crowded markets, the constant buzz of bargaining and the smells from food stalls shape how Indian cities and towns look, sound and smell. Hundreds of millions toil in the informal economy without contracts, outside the tax system, often on miserable income. But it also soaks up unemployment for the millions of not-so-well-trained young Indians entering the workforce every year. But these sights, sounds and smells may soon vanish, or at least reduce a lot in future. But there are signs that work in India is undergoing a transformation. Data such as the number of employees registered with the National Pension Fund, the number of firms paying goods and service tax, that is GST, and the number of job postings on job sites like monster.com suggests India's workforce is becoming increasingly formal. This should improve the working conditions and wages of Indians, and it is possible India might soon look like Dubai or even Singapore, bringing about a complete transformation. Let's understand what's going on and why. India is a country rich in culture and history, and its informal economy plays a major role in both. The informal sector employs about 90% of India's workforce and contributes roughly 45% of country's GDP, including a wide range of informal businesses and occupations such as street vendors, small farmers and casual labor. While these workers are not always protected by labor laws or social security measures and may not have access to formal credit or financial services, the informal economy is a vital part of India's culture and way of life, influencing everything from the bustling markets to the sound of bargaining and the smell of food carts lining the roads. It is also a source of resilience, able to absorb unemployment and adapt to changing circumstances. However, recently, we have seen a number of indicators pointing towards an increase in formal employment in India. First, there has been a significant increase in the number of employees registered with the National Pension Fund. In the first half of India's fiscal year ending in September, the number of registered employees rose by 35% compared to the same period in the previous year, equivalent to an increase of about 9 million people. The increase was seen across all age groups, but the biggest gains were among people aged 18 to 25 which suggests that the additions may be due to new jobs rather than transfer of old jobs to a formal footing. The largest category of new hires was expert services, which includes coders and clerks, and reflects India's growing importance as destination for technical and back office services. The second largest category was cleaning and sweeping services, which are the type of jobs that would previously have been unregistered. Another indicator of the shift towards formal employment is the increase in the number of firms paying the goods and service tax, GST. The GST is a tax on purchases that can be offset against sales, and companies are more likely to register with the authorities in order to receive cashbacks. The number of firms paying GST has risen from 8 million to 14 million since 2017. Finally, sites such as Monster have seen an increase in job postings for formal employment. This trend is likely to be driven by a variety of factors and has important implications for the country's economy and workforce. First, it is important to note that there are some quirks in the data that may partially explain the shift towards formal employment. One example is the fact that registration with the National Pension Fund is required for firms more than 20 employees. 
rates. This means an increase in just one person could boost recorded rolls by 21, which could exaggerate swings during an economic upturn. Additionally, Indian economy is currently rebounding from the COVID-19 pandemic and growing quickly, with estimates suggesting that GDP rose by around 7% in 2022. This economic growth may be creating new jobs and encouraging more businesses to register and pay taxes in order to access the benefits of being a formal business. While these quirks in data collection and economic upturn may partially explain the shift towards formal employment, it is likely that other more significant and long-term trends are also at play. One factor that may be contributing is changes in countries' financial activity. The introduction of the Goods and Service Tax GST, in 2017 has made it necessary for companies to pay taxes on purchases that can be offset against sales. This has provided an incentive for companies to register with the authorities in order to receive the cash back. Additionally, the implementation of the government backed electronic payment system in 2016 has made it easier for authorities to monitor and track financial transactions, reducing evasion. These changes to the financial system may have encouraged more companies to operate formally in order to take advantage of these benefits and avoid penalties. As multinational companies expand their operations in India, they often bring with them more formal employment practices and a greater focus on compliance with tax and other regulations. This can lead to an increase in formal employment as smaller companies that do business with these multinationals must also operate formally in order to fit into their payment and tracking systems. This includes companies in the supply chain for their multinationals, such as those that provide raw materials, transportation and other support services. As these companies become more integrated into the operations of the multinationals, they may be required to follow more formal employment practices and pay taxes in order to do business with them. The expansion of people-heavy industries such as tourism and hospitality may also contribute to the shift towards more formal employment. These industries often include chains rather than independent establishments, which may be more likely to follow established employment practices and pay taxes. As these industries grow, they may provide more job opportunities for workers, some of which may be in the formal sector. The growth of these industries may also be driven by government initiatives to promote tourism and hospitality as a source of economic growth and employment. Government initiatives to encourage formal employment may also be contributing to the shift. These initiatives include policies and programs that make it easier for companies to register and operate formally, such as simplifying tax codes and regulatory requirements. They could also include incentives for companies to hire workers on a formal basis, such as tax breaks or subsidies. These initiatives may be aimed at encouraging more businesses to operate formally in order to increase tax revenues and provide more protections and benefits for workers. Finally, social and cultural factors may also be contributing to the shift towards more formal employment. One potential benefit of the shift towards more formal employment in India is that workers may experience improved pay and benefits. Formal employment is often associated with higher pay and better working conditions than informal employment. Formal jobs may offer a more stable income as workers are often entitled to a fixed salary or wages rather than being paid on a piecemeal basis. They may also come with benefits such as paid time off, health insurance and retirement saving plan. These benefits can provide a sense of security and financial stability for workers, which can improve their overall well-being and quality of life. While the shift towards more formal employment in India may have some benefits for workers, it could also have negative impacts on the informal economy and culture. The informal economy is a vital part of India's culture and has provided a source of living for millions of people. If the shift towards formal employment leads to a decline in informal employment, it could have negative consequences for people who rely on it for their livelihood. It could also lead to a loss of cultural vibrancy, as the informal sector is often associated with sights, sounds and smells that shape the character of India, cities and towns. Informal employment may also provide flexibility and autonomy for workers, which may be lost in more formal employment arrangements. It will be important for the government and other stakeholders to address the potential negative consequences that may arise. This could include policies and programs to help informal workers transition to formal employment, such as training and retraining programs or incentives for companies to hire informal workers. It could also include measures to support the informal sector 
such as access to credit or regulatory relief. Additionally, the government could consider policies to ensure that formal employment is of high quality and provides faith, pay and benefits to work. By taking a proactive approach to addressing the potential negative consequences, the government can help to ensure that it has a positive overall impact on the economy and society. If you like this video, I'm sure you'll like this video. And please consider subscribing. It will really help us with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for watching. I'm Sharat Mantravadi.